Pew. Hey everyone, welcome to the 10th edition of our devlog. As usual, we're here with plenty of awesome news and updates on the game, so take your time to watch it all. I'm Freya from the Mac Arena community team, and I'll be sharing some gripping news on features and content that are currently in development. Before we begin, please keep in mind that the features I mentioned here may change, be delayed or even get cancelled. With that in mind, let's kick off with a quick recap of what's happened in Mac Arena since our last devlog episode. Firstly, we launch a brand new feature – modifiers. They change particular stats of weapon or ability, such as damage, or even mechanics such as blueprint drop chance. Looks like players are enjoying them so far, so we'll keep them coming and add new ones from time to time. That said, in the future we'll also be activating modifiers for specific max. We'll let you know when that happens. We've also run this Strange Matter event, where we've introduced a new Mac, Hamlock, two new weapons, Creo Launcher and Quantum Gun, and two pilots, Vox and Morpho. It's been a long run and we'd love to know if you enjoyed it, so drop us a comment if you have any thoughts. Our next big update, Aegis Dom Shields adjustment, has had an interesting impact. We've noticed that many of you started adding the Mac to your squads, meaning Aegis has become quite a popular tank choice recently. We've also introduced squad presets. This new feature allows you to save up to three squad setups and switch between them if you decide to try another game mode or change your playstyle in the next match. Not to mention, it will save you some time preparing for battles. Finally, after the visual redesign of the game, our team has also made some changes to its main musical theme. We are happy to hear how much you liked it even if the old one holds a special place in your hearts. Looks like we're off to a good start, huh? Let's move on to see what's coming up next in Mac Arena. First up, a brand new Mac. Meet Vortex, a legendary tank with a nanobot field ability. It's big, and its base speed isn't too high at 18 km per hour. It's got a decent energy capacity of 24, so it can pack some serious firepower. But its ability is what really sets it apart. Activating nanobot field increases Vortex speed significantly, but that's not all. While the ability is active, the mech surrounds itself with a field of microscopic machines. This reduces the damage taken by Vortex and any teammates within its radius, and enemies will take continuous damage while they remain within the field. Pretty sweet. Let's move on to weapons now. We are expecting two brand new toys soon, both legendary ones. The first one is Repeater, a close quarter weapon with an extremely high fire rate and a spacious magazine. It couples its brutal damage output with a recharging magazine. Play skillfully, and you can keep the pressure on your opponents without reloading, so there'll be no stop to the close range mayhem. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to try it out. The next one on the list is a beam weapon known as a shifter beam. For now, we've only got some concepts from our team, but we can tell you the basics of how it'll work. The main thing about this weapon is that it'll have two firing modes. Let's call them Beam and Blast. It works like this. When you first start shooting, the weapon works in the Beam mode, dealing continuous damage to an enemy, thus filling up its Blast bar. Once full, the Shifter Beam fires the so-called Blast after one second delay. A perfect way to finish the enemy with a big hit of burst damage. The other difference between these two modes is that the blast is more powerful and has much higher range than the beam. So even if the enemy wants to escape, the blast probably wouldn't give them the chance. Sounds cool, huh? More info coming soon. Well, let's now have a quick word about the newest legendary pilots you'll soon see in Mac Arena. First off, let's take a sneak peek at Ingrid, a pilot specializing in beam weapons. We haven't had many beam pilots recently, so this one's good for a change. I wouldn't mess with her, though. The other pilot is named Nicholas, and he specializes in missile weapons. 
The name probably gives a little hint when you can see this guy in-game, which is quite soon. Keep an eye on our updates and don't let Nicholas steal your holiday mood. Together with Nicholas come some cool new maps specifically designed for the upcoming event and this specific pilot. Fun fact, these maps were once part of a gift production factory that suffered an unexpected shutdown. Perfect setting for a holiday showdown, right? Set in a wintry theme, this will be the new death maps with some lovely animations and visual effects. Not to mention, they'll be among the most compact maps so far. Great for those who love some tough close-up battles. But don't think they'll be only available during the winter season. They're here to stay for a while, so you'll have plenty of time to enjoy and discover them in more detail. For dessert, I've left a very brief yet exciting announcement. We are now on the latest stages of PvE mode development. We know you asked for this one for a while and it's already in the works. Testing will start soon. You'll be the first ones to find out about its release, so keep an eye on our official community pages. For now, that's it for upcoming features. Let's finish up with our traditional Q&A blog. Here comes our first question. We already mentioned some bossy things with the PvE mode in our dev talk in August. We have the idea of adding the bosses in mind, but it's a long way down the road now. Firstly, we want to test and see what players' experience of fighting against AI-controlled enemies should feel like, work out more tools for this game mode, define our goals and expectations, properly implement the mechanics and more. As soon as we nail those down and know that it'll work well both for the team and for you, our players will start expanding the PvE mode into other directions, one of which is the boss feature. As soon as we're 100% happy with our goals and the core mechanics of this feature, we'll start working on it and let you know right away. The next question is about dedicated merch. We would love to see those ourselves, but there are no plans for the production of Macarena merch. Yes, we have some limited edition items, but they're only available for our team members. In Europe, we do sometimes offer it at our booths and lectures during game conferences. The last question comes from Demotivationals. The thing is, we don't have any plans for such pilot progression. However, we are currently working on quality of life and other improvements for our pilots. We'll provide more details in our future devlogs, so make sure not to miss them. And that's it for today's devlog. We're really excited about all cool things coming to Macarena soon, and we hope you are too. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe to our channel, and leave your questions and comments below. As always, we'll pick some of them for the next Devlogs Q&A. See you soon! Welcome to the 10th edition of our Devlog. Oi. Oi. Has had an interest in it. You know, it's a little With a nan about to fit. Did you go? Zapnuxia, to pay mozak. I was like, I'm going to be with an extremely high fight. When you first start shooting, there were... Blah, blah. <laughs> Great for those who love some tough close-up battles.